Hey, it's Chris. What are you doing? Crowdfunding roundup, baby. You know it. So, five launching simultaneously on GameFound? Okay. A few big ones also launching on Kickstarter, including Veiled Fate, the latest of the South Tigris series, and Legacy of Flame. So, what do you need to know? Running them all through as fast as I can with as much information as I can do in as short a time as possible. As always, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and subscribe. We're inching closer to 10K. I don't know. I haven't looked in the last week or so. Let's go. Okay, actually, we'll start over here on Kickstarter. We'll go with Veiled Fate Tribunal. If you missed my video earlier in the week, well, you can check it out because it's adding essentially a little bit of four different module expansions and they're bringing back the popular, ever popular, Super Wooden Board, which again, saw a really great response, I think, over with uh, Sakura Slam and Kabuto Sunimo from Allplay. And so the four modules, essentially, what you're going to be getting here with the Veiled Fate Tribunal, if you're not familiar with Veiled Fate in the first place from IV Studios here, it is a not really social deduction-esque, but a meta gaming trying to figure out and trying to maneuver your own demigod around this map, trying to get renowned victory points, and not let anyone else know which one you are because in the tricky standpoint with this one is that you can move any piece on the board and you're moving them from area to area taking individual actions but also placing them on quests that are located around the board in the first place through three ages this expansion adds an extra command command so six commands total that you have as actions if you will and then you also have basically three other bigger uh, expansion type, non just extra stuff, right? You get additional cards, you get additional quests, you get a little additional adventure quests that are little side areas of the main board that are like individual quests for those particular uh, areas in the first place. But then you also have the three main cruxes of what this expansion is going to be offer. And this expansion is offering Hydria, the main vengeful god. Essentially, her mechanism is. She gets her own renown, and if you end up with more renown than her at the end of the game, you lose. You're out. You can't win. And so anyone that's lower than her is going to be able to win. The second one here is the Celestials. I'm screwing up a bunch of words here at the beginning. And seven asymmetric roles, as it says. It's not really a one versus all because you're kind of one versing all already, right? And you're just getting different ways of manipulation, and some of them may be more to your... Uh, style you're liking and some of them may not be depending on if you prefer a sorcerer who has its own different actions or the mother of all which has different command cards or just things along those lines you have to guess which ones are which ones and you're taking notes or do you like the fact that you have to have all of the player characters higher than the non-player characters or all of the non-player characters higher than that you know you get my drift and then the last one is the servants you have these three titans that you can basically roam and that's where the sixth uh, action comes in is the command action and what you're doing here is you're essentially taking an action to allow them to move one of them increases quest uh, values of one side one of them increases quest values of the other side and then the other last one the third titan actually just doubles the reward so high risk high reward tribunal box if you want all the other stuff and all packaged in a big big box 48 hours get you a pin so um there you go that's everything you need to know uh, you can back it now. You have the wooden board, the deluxifications, the holographs, the exclusive box, the adventures expansion that I mentioned. Uh, you can make it metal as well if you'd like. So there you go. That's everything that you need to kind of know. It's just what it is. I really like the, especially two of the expansions, the servants and Hadria and the extra cards, right? Extra cards or extra cards, extra cards that you can lay down as sort of this uh, bidding, not really bidding, but voting, I should say manner that you do the quest in the first place because you lay your character on the quest card then you put out a vote card and no one knows what side you're voting for and you get a reward based on what happens so you get funding you get funding uh there's plenty of how to play videos there's plenty of time and stuff around if you want to go check it out on this board game geek there's tons of information so uh yeah tons and tons of stuff make it metal if you really want to um hey, whoa that's me Ha 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 ha. Yeah, I said that. And they put that on there. That's freaking awesome, right? Like, I, I said this in the past in my videos, right? I, I'm going to put quotes on there that I want you to know, like, I'm right. Which coincidentally is exactly what my favorite thing to do in games like this is as a crazy, chaotic, neutral god. Like, I just love chaos. And that's what some of these expansions do. So, there you go. More, more stuff, more tribunal, more metal, pledge levels, fate dice, renewal expansion, micro expansion there with metal dice, so you can get everything to your heart's content to deluxify, or not, if you so choose. And we scroll down here, metals, 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 uh, lore book, hoodies. Ah, oh, I actually, uh, I actually needed a hoodie, surprisingly. 
Uh, I've been meaning to buy one like off of T Fury or one of those T Public sites because the hoodie that you've seen me wear on the channel and other videos, like it's almost like practically see-through. I know it's like crappy material, but it's just warm enough that in like the cold winter here that it does okay. So again, Ivy Studios, not widely available on the retail market. So again, you see a lot of support from that aspect because that's what they've similarly got going on here and this is no exception. So there you go, expansion putting out some good money. So next up we have our Mellow, the board game, which apparently is based off a video game. Unfortunately, uh, four videos here, uh, two little playthrough previews, but I think all of it's paid content, so take that for what you will. Uh, but what you're getting here essentially is sort of a draw cards, buy cards, roll and move style of game on a hex based grid. So unfortunately, without watching any of the videos, you can look at this page and say this is looking like a kind of a cool, but albeit somewhat generic fantasy game and say, OK, why am I going to look at this and play this over other things? It gives me like a weight of a Cthulhu death may die or a zombie side style. Uh, now with miniatures and $79 for this and then all the pledge levels higher are mostly just uh, Deluxifications you get some bonus King Kings treasure cards there as well But that's about the extent of I believe the additional actual gameplay content So that's not inexpensive for let's see what you're getting because standard edition stretch goals here but then collector's edition stretch goals there so you're getting stretch goals based on what level you're backing, which is always kind of a little bit strange unless they're doing like a miniature and a standee version. And that'd be my only curiosity, I guess, that I don't really have sorted out in my head. But you can kind of see here the cards, the rewards, the hero cards, and you have combat, which is dice based with hits and blocks rather than numbers. And you basically roll a certain number of dice and see who does more hits or damage. And you can upgrade the mats, I think, as a deluxification in addition. So here you can see cardboard uh, palace model, two extra treasure cards, like I mentioned, and they run you through again, the add-ons and the little content here is all. Now they've got a little bit of gameplay content here as the stretch goals, but again, interestingly enough, um, they're locking that behind the collectors. So it's gonna cost you $30 essentially for the stretch goals. And if these are mostly deluxifications, mm, you know, will you be willing to pay for them? Here are the previously mentioned videos, uh, gameplay features, again, it says what it says but what are the dynamics when you're drawing these cards uh, of the actions on them two action cards any number of bonus cards roll and spend your dice okay complete a quest draw a new one uh so it's it's very bread and butter what you're looking for a crawl style so if you're looking for something lighter and shorter play time although it does say two to three hours that'd be my only concern because i also don't see necessarily when you're going through here okay you're exploring dungeons you're getting battles you're playing these action cards that i mentioned using your dice and what's the end game though like i did not see on there and i probably missed it but like where's the end game when is the scenario end are you doing specific objective based scenarios is it going to be sort of well what and that's the clear picture that you can't really get from the page there's just not as much information I'd like to see as a gameplay. And, you know, again, there's not as much information, you know, Tribunal with Veiled Fate didn't have, you know, the most, like it's, I'm very hard to appease, I know, from a gameplay standpoint on the page, but it has enough information, right? That game's been out for a couple years, so there's no question of what that game is or isn't. When you've got this and you're saying two to three hours, and then you're saying, okay, well, this is this and this is this, you're just, you know, dealing with the dangers that come across, Again, you're showing me all of the content, but I don't get the flow of things without watching a video. I just don't like that. And I can watch the preview videos. You can watch the playthroughs. And so, you know, I might do that after this video ends just to get a better sense of it. But there's nothing on this page right now that says this is what's dramatically different. This is why you absolutely need this game over something else. This is what it does uniquely in these gameplay features than any other game that you've played. So, again... If it's got a following from a video game side of things and it's nice to look at from a fantasy, you know, it's getting $200,000 with some miniatures. So check it out if you want. Next up, Flashpoint Legacy of Flame. I know I threw a Legacy of the Flame there previously. I apologize. But $120,000 as a Flashpoint revision into the Legacy realm uh, coming now with a new edition. One to six players, about 60 minutes per scenario. Uh, two ways of playing, just your basic level of play and then your advanced expert mode here that adds, as it says, thematic elements, flashover, combustible materials, random setup variations on the difficulty. 
So essentially what you do is you take, uh, just like your pandemic-esque style, a certain number of actions on a turn-by-turn -turn basis, and then the fire advances to other places within the building. You're rescuing seven victims that are trapped in the building, and as you're rescuing them, you can only afford to apparently lose four of them. Whew. Uh, thematically, whew, don't want to lose four people. Okay, uh, and so advancing the campaign, new mechanics, new maps, new plot twists, as well as new equipment for your firefighters. So... Um, I'd be intrigued to see how they could make this uh, a plot, you know, uh, engaging plot. It reminds me of Chicago Fire, if you will. And with the legacy game on crowdfunding, that's the twist, right? Like, how much can you actually reveal to people to entice them that, hey, this is really going to be a good mechanic. This is really going to be something different. This is really going to be, you know, something that you want to see. Because you also don't want to spoil it. And the problem is, right, that's about it. And the stretch goals or the unlocks here, it looks like there's actually going to be some a very small amount, at least at the time of me filming this, actual gameplay content. So that's going to be the incentive, but no gameplay gameplay. And and that being said, I mean, Flashpoint is relatively straightforward, just like Pandemic is. So how much twist are you expecting? Uh, how much are you desiring? And again, are you willing to go out on a limb with this one with a little less information uh, comparatively? So if you are, there you go. Next up, we have Fantasy Form, a button shy wallet game. I covered it earlier in the week with the upcoming Battle Crest. I'll probably do a dedicated video here uh, with a combination of small games to go along with that uh, prior to that campaign, I think later this month. But this is fantasy form. This is a solo only one. Again, that's why I'm not really talking about it because I'm not great at the solo ones. And so what you're doing here is you have your alchemist and you are going up against your rival. And so you have a companion that's going to be overlapping with your card. And as you start to get ready to battle your rival, you're going to have these row of cards set out in front of you. Encounters as well as the row of where you're going to be buying stuff. And then you're going to be taking ultimately two of the encounters that are present. One, the leftmost one, they say, for the Outland event. And the next one in sequence for its Forge event. You may earn, you may be costing uh, your shards or your essences, your currency, essentially, that you can use to spend as upgrades later on, or difficult choices, or, you know, sometimes you just have to take damage for what it is. Buying and selling, then, in the ethereal row, and then spending your shards on those upgrades that I mentioned as well. You're offering forms, though, that's kind of cool, to determine, well, your max health, your environment will impact on certain encounters, as well as necessary considerations to beat your rival in the first place. So, I mean, if I was a solo gamer, this one would really intrigue me. I just, I have trouble just playing solo only games, like solo to learn them, like two handed, three handed, uh, solo, you know, just whatever, you know, to learn the actual mechanisms. Sure. And again, I feel like I'm just missing something and I'm missing out. So I, I do love the idea of this because this theme is, is where I would exactly love things as a whole. And they don't do stretch goals like they always say. You get a little mini expansion to go along with it. So you get a blizzard to give you a different form. So that's cool. And they always offer you a print and play. And I'm guessing they have a little bit, oh, shapeshift collection here to go along with it. So they often will give you a few of their back catalog in addition. So uh, the $25,000 is usually split between a couple of those. But it's button shy. You know what you're getting. They put out a solid quality product. No worries about that. It's just whether or not this one's right for you. There you go. Okay, now we're going to hop over to GameFound, but I have to go on a walk with my kid and wife because we just watched Bluey and now we need to take a break. So we'll be right back. You won't even notice it. Okay, I'm back from my walk. You never even noticed it because of the camera magic. But essentially what you've got going on here with Roth is Chip Theory's latest. And as the Board Game Geek forum comments are like, this isn't like a typical Chip Theory game. It's not. That's okay. That's okay. This is a lighter style area control under one hour is what they're going for. So what you're getting at a $55 pledge point here is the base game. The all-in gameplay bundle, though, with two extra factions is going to cost you another $31 per faction uh, divided by two. So you're costing almost $16 per faction expansion there. Not bad, not horrible if you think of expansion content. If you want to deluxify it, well, you can triple that price point. Triple that price point, folks. Triple that price price point and get it all and if you wanted to strategist pledge well too bad suckers ah uh, that's a lot of money like a couple years ago that would have been worth it now especially with inflation especially with only getting i think it only gets you the base game of their games going forward you're gonna have to probably spend that now to get uh how many projects to make up for that i don't know six eight projects i mean and that's fine right you'll eventually recoup it right? Because that's what you do is you buy to sell, right? Buy to sell. It's an investment strategy. But essentially what you're doing in this game, and when you actually get down to the gameplay here, uh, it says you have five unique factions, two as expansions, and you're getting through the phases that you're going to be dealing. And 
I don't know if it's tongue in cheek, but the preview video from Chip Theory actually says if two people want the same faction, you play a mini game of the game itself and then a mini game of the mini game if there's still a dispute. So like, I'm hoping that's a joke, <laughs> right? Uh, because then what you're doing is you're slowly utilizing these dice in a drafting manner after allocating your troops. And there's like five different actions on these different dice that are going to pertain to not only the currency, moving troops, battling troops, or just using your all seeing die as a special action anytime throughout your turn, which also allows you to potentially use your one time per game special super ability from the faction dynamic. And you're gonna have three of these, either troops or abilities on the side of your board to indicate what makes your faction unique, right? Hence, right there. So if you look right here, I pulled the video up and paused it at the point that shows you these five actions. Gain the money, deploy two troops, deploy two troops and move troops, choose any region and move your troops or attack. So I would have liked to see a rule book at the launch. Now I think, I swear, I would swear that these gifts were not actually on the day that it launched. And I think these were almost updated afterwards. Again, I'm probably wrong. I probably just missed them the first time through. But I hope that this is soon because let's see, how long is this campaign? I didn't actually look. So it's uh, two weeks, two weeks, just over two week campaign. But you know, Elder Scrolls a year and a half later almost, you know, doesn't have a rule book out as well. So uh, at least the time when I did the look back earlier at the beginning of the month. And uh, you know, if you've got four preview videos down here, what we'll get to in a minute are four preview videos uh, and then one review, there's a rule book. There's a rule book that was sent to those people. So I would hope that you can have a rule book uh, very shortly for us to do as well. Here's the all seeing, here's the elite troops, you know, the elite troops versus the normal troops, one health point versus others. And you can also play it co-op against an AI system. How do you feel about that? I don't know, because again, this is a lot of programming from an AI system and I'd be, you know, a little reluctant. I, I'm, I'm terribly interested in this game, folks. I wasn't kidding when this is my most interesting game of the month for me. Like Carnival of Chaos, awesome. You heard me uh, earlier in the week backing it. Uh, you heard me also on the earlier video this week of my most anticipated arrivals, uh, Cascadia, the Rollings, yeah. And then this one, and fifty-five dollars. Oh, I mean, you know, again, Chip Theory gonna be more at retail. You're gonna save ten bucks probably, plus or minus shipping, but. This is a bigger unknown. In area control, I enjoy it, but it's not also my favorite mechanism. It's not in the bottom, but it's not the top either. But it gives me vibes of Rumble Nation. It gives me those Erklings of Rumble Nation vibes with the dice rolling and the allocating the actions and the simple movement between areas, but with more. And again, I question more, more, more. Now, these tell you a little bit of what you're doing, but they don't actually you know, explicitly tell you what you're doing. So again, you're gonna have to watch maybe a video to get a sense of things because yeah, you can watch their learn to play video, which is probably gonna be the best one on the page, but it's gonna cost you 10 additional dollars. So $65, depending on what stretch goals we get here may be the better or not. And so faction mats, okay, great. AI faction challenge, AI faction challenge, not gonna change my opinion. Uh, Roth emblem, don't care and uh, don't care about the dice upgrades. So. I mean, we'll see. Nothing that you couldn't miss either, though, right now. So, again, super still interested. Gonna watch this one down to the wire, but, um, you know, we'll see. I, I'm not as excited as I was hoping, but, again, asymmetry, this style of lighter things, that's sort of me in a Venn diagram as well. So check it out. So I commented this a couple months ago and, you know, I, I made the, the situation or the comment about how some projects have gone over to GameFound and not done as well, like Kingdom Rush. Uh, some apparently have, but this is one that was curious to me because they got significantly less. And I wondered at the time if it was because Dwarven Forge was just like saturated because it was like a redo of like a very similar campaign that they did over on Kickstarter. Or are people just, you know, sort of marketed out of s this product as a whole from Dwarven Forge? I don't really know. It's a huge business, d and D. I I mean, Critical Role made this, you know, just absolutely positively smashing. But if anything, I'd argue that and maybe it's the space theme because it doesn't jive as well with a lot of the core D&D, you know, Pathfinder. It just doesn't, right? Like this is not going to be as compatible. So, I mean, they put out a solid product and you can spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on it like some people I'm sure are, 
but is that really of interest to you? Again, I have no clue. You're going to get a better value, value, quote unquote. But, you know, as someone who always wanted to dabble in this and wishes I had, you know, uh, a sure mama who would pay for all of this stuff. And so I could just play this stuff all day and night and weekend and everything else. Super superfluously deluxified uh, terrain for a game I can't get played. Um, it'd be awesome. But um, yeah, think about that for a second there. Uh, 279 people, $300,000. Anyway, you do the math. Dungeons and Layers, on the other hand, though, is doubled that. And again, this has pre-painted as well. So is it really just a thematic incorporation difference? Look at all these stretch goals. Again, they've done a really good job of putting a lot of stretch goals with their previous experiences. So uh, yeah, miniatures, caves. Again, it's sort of adjacent from Archon. And Archon's uh, best campaigns have actually been all these. There's a reason that this is their sixth campaign of this because of this terrain and because again i think that's probably the biggest difference between this one and dwarven forge ironically both launching back to back is fantasy versus space fantasy sells better period period i think that's the biggest difference and so these are kind of cool looking again like i would love this like just to have this set up and you know you've seen those pictures on youtube or reddit where they've just got like this whole basement like huge massive mother effing table all over the place colored miniatures like true to scale you're like doing your dnd and i'd love that but again nope can't do it none of a place i barely have a big enough table to fit my computer and games to review on here <laughs> that's what my patreon's for small plug uh go over to my patreon and support me there so i can do that by the way i am thinking about doing that gofundme that i joked about the other week maybe i should just do that uh pre-painted unpainted do what you want save some money uh or get it blinged out if you can't paint like me so Spend a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars, depending on how uh, generous you're feeling. So I'm going to leave it at that before I get myself in trouble. And that's Dungeons and Lasers. Six caves. Now, next up, we're going to talk about Robot Quest Arena Bot Battle from Wise Wizard Games. $300,000. You're getting killing it. A lot of these six digit projects this week. But what you've got going on here is sort of a combination of heavy take that spatial grid movement and pre-painted robots to do your deck building. And so they're offering you just more, more of more. And so they give you straight at the top, you know, what about the new bots? Here are the two new bots that you're gonna get. And there was exclusive content previously. So the retail version, I think, didn't have some of the other characters or expansions that were widely available. I can't speak to exactly off the top of my head without going back to the previous campaign page. But essentially you draw your five cards and you utilize those to take your actions of maneuvering your bots around the arena fighting other bots and when you deal them damage you steal their life cubes as victory points play a certain number of rounds and then the person with the most victory points wins now it is a heavy take that but the plus side they say is that there's no player elimination so if you get eliminated you just spawn back up at the beginning of the next round at full health say what you will about that again that's a, a little bit of a you know divisive issue with the i guess i want to say just heavy 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 head to head and so I think people like it for what it is, but I think also people were a little concerned that this, the combination of those mechanics really fit what they're looking for as well. A few of the comments that in the reviews that I've read, best at four, very, very chaotic, very, very King of the Hill-ish, and you just kind of go. And so there's not gonna be a huge lot of strategy. There might not even be a huge amount of tactical nature. It's just kind of bash them, bash them, pick your favorites and do some crazy stuff. And if that's your kind of game, you know, sometimes you just like that style of game. So it gives you a little bit of the overview here, gives you exactly what I just told you there. And you can get, again, like I said, exclusive stuff here with the base game and the promo pack, the new bots who just wait, 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 whoa, new bots, just new bots, $90 for, I mean, and you're paying for the premium, this side of things, right? You're not paying for this. If each of these things has four tiles, 12 cubes, like I don't need cubes and gems. Essentially, if you're only playing up to like four players a game, I don't need cubes and gems for each person. So you're really paying for a while the deluxified miniature prepaint thing over there rather than any of this other stuff because that's pennies on the dollar, essentially. Everything new, holy crap, a storage, $159 for this game. All of it is going to cost you over $200. You have to love this. No, I wasn't even the all in. Holy balls, Batman. So that's a ton of money. And again, the exclusive stuff here that I mentioned. So I didn't even have to pull up the previous page. That's a ton of money for a game like this. You better love this game. I mean, you can buy half of Aeon's End for that price point. <laughs> I don't know why that's my comparison here, but do you like it? Do you like it? You need to love it. You need to love it for that price point. So this one has tried before you buy. I'd love to try this one because I could see myself and my kids absolutely adoring this. 
but I could also see it falling flat with some of the heavy take that and just kind of, you know, does it turn into just a slug them out? You stand next to the other person and, and bash back and forth without any maneuvering. Like how important is the hex based maneuvering grid when you're putting it in this sort of situation there? So I don't know. Again, exclusive content with the pack and the new cards and the new tiles there. They run you through all the same stuff down here. You can piecemeal it, a la mode it if you want. And again, there's plenty of content so you know what you're getting in. And so all the biggest people are on this page and you can check out their opinions and how they feel about things too. So yeah, it's again, it's a ton of money and it's going to cost you a pretty penny to have it shipped as well. So that's it. I mean, it's doing really well. Like, I think it's a solid thing. Interestingly enough, when I went over to the Board Game Geek page, there are only about 700 ratings, which is a lot less than I thought for as popular of a game as I thought it was as well. So either way, good look, see. Last up, I think, over here on GameFound, at least for the time being, is Algae Incorporated from Game Brewer. And this was sort of on my radar as one of my more interesting games, just because I wasn't sure what to expect. This is a heavy game. This is a heavy game. There's like 10 pages of gameplay uh, explanation in the rule book of like the 25 pages that's on there. So just be aware of that. It's about 50% funded. And basically what you're doing is you're producing algae by the use of workers that you're going to be recruiting and then using a worker placement to then select the machines that they're going to be activating. And you have four different colored conveyor belts that are going to be slowly conveying the biomass or the algae, depending on, you know, actually I think it says byproduct. Uh, accordingly across those conveyor belts across the machines to upgrade them and utilizing a tech tree to slowly allow you to uh, resource manage I guess if you will along the way but there are going to be sideboards that you're going to be dealing with milestones that you're going to be having to complete as well as a lot of resource cube management right there so only one pledge level so game brewer has uh, learned or adapted based on the previous uh, situations of some of the other ones like amygdala so $67 and you can a la mode again, all the other side things that you want and clicking on this will actually get you the rule book, but it gives you at least the briefest overview like I just gave you in terms of how you're going to be doing because you have many different sectors of the factory you're going to be managing your workers in, recruiting your staff and then activating them depending on which action you choose to take, activating those machines and the conveyor belts as they go along and certain ones you can activate and then other ones have to be activated by machines in the first place. You're exporting those goods in order to then bring them to the market to get the milestones. So that's what you're trying to do in a nutshell, but this is going to be heavier. It's going to be more complicated. It slightly almost gives me vibes of pick up and deliver with the conveyor belts, but not exactly either because you're kind of moving them along, which is again, something kind of different, but that's the question is I have no idea what the flow is going to look like. This gameplay is extensive. You really need to read the rule book more than anything else with this one and just give it a look. See, there's plenty of preview videos here as well. If you'd like that sort of thing, but that's about the greatest extent that I can say. This one is a heavy, heavy watch the gameplay video or give the detailed, detailed rule book a really good look-see if you're one of those people because you're not going to get it from the page, unfortunately, as well. But 50% funded, so we'll kind of see where it ends up. So next up, Adventure is Nigh. I guess this is a web series, YouTube D&D campaign, and they've ported it over to the Red Dragon Inn, if you're familiar with that uh, semi-drinking, you know, deduction-esque, push-your-luck style game. So they're just making a standalone game and you can combine it with the Red Dragon Inn and make it a game engine that you're familiar with in the first place. So that's kind of all you need to know. They give you the how to play on it. They give you slight variations of the characters that are going to be here that make this game a little bit different. As always, they have a little bit of exclusive in order to entice you to back it on crowdfunding, including a collector's edition and a few stretch goals to go along with it. But again, that's the bare minimum of a page and... Uh, Slugfest is definitely playing off the name here, but you know what? It worked well. got $60,000 so far. So if you're a fan of the series, is this going to make you check it out or maybe make you interested in this game for the first time? Well, go give it a look-see. Okay, I'm going to do my best on this one, but you know what? It's heavy. It's gobbledygook to me sometimes. And it's interesting, though, at the same time. Inventors of the South Tigers, quarter million dollars, doing well. Again, another six-digit funding and what are you getting out of Inventors? How is Inventors different? Again, why are you getting it? You're getting the promo, you're gonna get it sooner, and maybe you get some coins along with it to complete your set. So the key features that they lay out right here, dice, innovative resource management, upskill your craftspeople, variability, strategic death, okay, 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 positive player interactions, shared infrastructure, and a solo mode. So victory points, through one of influencing the guilds. 
rule book is right here folks right here let's go over there for a second 36 pages right here so you can see we'll, we'll scroll back to the rule book here and you can see the dice are going to be slowly inspired as you go through these different uh, landscapes and they become more available more upgradable and more improvable you have 11 dice that are going to be allocated to you at the beginning of the game you're going to be able to get two more by moving your ship you can also availability wise swap your white dice with those colored depending on how you're utilizing those other workshops through the use of camels because the main concepts that you get to from all of these others the research the ship movement all of those action faction selection systems that you're going to be doing well it all gets distilled down over a three to four round game i know right that kind of scares me as a side note like when the game says only play three rounds how long are those rounds holy crap right like like okay 13 phases in each round anyway just kidding but this is what it distills down to but don't be fooled about what it's actually describing here placing dice on camels dice in workshop placing a worker or go to the tent the tent though changes what you do on your turns in that round going forward so again that's what you're going to be aware and then simultaneous rest selection ends the round as a whole and then this is where the nitty gritty comes in, right? Placing dice on the camels. Well, when you place the dice in the camel, is that one simple action that I just mentioned up there? Whoops, you can actually invent, build, test, or publish. So that's not insignificant. They run you through all four of these things right there. You're placing your dice in your workshops though, three different workshops with a whole ton of other stuff, columns and rows that you're gonna be mitigating alongside of that. The workers, look at all the different worker placement spots so then you're also placing your tent and how dynamic that's going to be along with the free actions that are available to you so that's a lot of stuff a lot of stuff and you're gonna be traversing this boat across the whole board in order to get ungame objectives you're gonna be researching you're gonna be tech tree upgrading you're gonna have the skilled worker share infrastructure that i mentioned earlier so that's the briefest of overviews that i'm going to be able to give it to you and again you probably already know more than i do on this page and this game whether or not this is right for you playthroughs previews paid content and a little bit more right here and take it and get it for what you want and you know again your mileage is going to vary the price point is probably going to be fine but you're probably going to pay a little bit more especially with shipping and you're gonna you know get that in the form of promo pack later are you okay with that or not so as they always say go support us at retail and if this is the heaviest of the heavies for you from their series, well, go for it. Otherwise, maybe maybe dip your toes in one of the other two first. But anyway, inventors of the South Tigers. Next up, Craft Wagon, Age of Engineering. Yeah, that Craft Wagon is getting like a sequel here. And they're also throwing in their uh, other game, Dragon's Gold, if you're more interested in that one. But this takes more of a Euro style mechanistic approach. Something reminding me a little bit of uh, Glenmore, if you will, Glenmore 2 and giving you that action vibe with what they call their action chain system here. Because essentially what you're doing is you're going and starting with over uh, three rounds, three phases each round. And when they are doing the action phase, the second phase of each of those rounds, you're gonna be moving along, potentially taking an asymmetric number of turns depending on the player count, because the further you are back or the further you are forward determines when you go. And so if you're moving slowly across these chains, taking the actions as you go and traverse them, then you could end up with multiple turns in a row before catching up to where other people are on the chain in the first place. And so it gives you a list of the actual actions you're taking right here, hiring your workers, building the car body, researching to make your markers go up the development track, as well as building your engine that you need in the first place at the workshop or putting it on the company board, attracting buyers, recruiting, as well as going to the Grand Prix. So lots of different actions, the scoring phase right here, because you're getting reputation based on your car's position that you're building in these phases as well. And so depending on how many laps and how well you do with the race and scoring after you uh, sell your car, those are going to be your end game scoring conditions as well as individual achievements that will depend on the game setup in the first place. There's a two player mode as well if you're interested in that. And again, that's about it. Dragon's Gold as well is down here. And this is a three to six player, uh, more searching uh, hidden treasure card game, if you will. You're going to be joining together to uh, triumph over the enemy by defeating them to get the treasure uh, before it's gone. And your potential heroes are going to give you ways of not only getting magical items, but potentially also taking them from other players. The tricky sticking point of Dragon's Gold here, if you read the rule book, is that as you combine all these adventures together to overcome the health of these dragons, they're going to give you treasure. But if there's multiple people defeating a dragon, you actually have one minute to negotiate how to divide the treasure. And so you can't involve anything other than that. No future distributions, no card exchanges, or agreement about future plays. 
And if you don't agree, well, you just don't get it. However, if you have a wizard participating, well, then you can get uh, a little bit more of the magic objects and kind of play how you want. If you're negotiating with a rogue, for example, it's also going to change what you can do during that negotiation phase as a whole. Uh, a couple of variants here, the market that you're going to be able to buy goods from and the end of the game scoring based on who's got the most treasures at the end. So uh, I'll give you thresholds with advanced rules in addition. So a light style, almost uh, what's the game? Cutthroat Caverns ask a slightly different vibe. So uh, let's see what we got going on price wise. Again, that's I'd expect that to be cheaper, just under thirty dollars. The Dragon's Gold and then Craft Wagons running about fifty. So do you remember the original Craft Wagon? I never played it. I'm only familiar with it in name alone. But again, how do you feel about this one versus the other one? Uh, you'd have to go check out and compare side to side because I don't have a clue. But you can do it. I know you can. Next up, Gearworks, Deluxe Edition, new promo cards coming back around $5,000. They said, uh, we sold a bunch of this stuff and then we lost a bunch of the other stuff to, uh, you know, the warehouse. They say the combination here of hand management area control with a little bit of Sudoku feature because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be laying these gear cards down, either as a solo or even a two-player mode, and you're going to be having to do certain things in both the rows and the columns. The columns themselves can actually only be one color, but then the rows can either be like an ascending or descending order depending on who places what where. And so at the end of the round when everyone has passed, you can pass prior to the round ending, but you can also get back in if you pay one of the currency called Spark. And so Spark allows you to do several things, gain more cards, gain more gear, things that you're gonna be utilizing to manipulate the board in the first place. You're also gonna have the potential use of asymmetric abilities if you want to play with tinkerers, uh, you know, as they're called in this game. And so if you control these areas, if you control these columns, then you get the gears or the contraption parts around the outside on either edge. And then if you have the right combination of them, you can build contraptions. If you build a certain number of contraptions, well, the game ends or you just win based on how many you build at the end as a whole. You're getting a playmat free with a deluxe edition here. So $29 plus the you know playmat included. So a little promo to go along with it and a solo mode. Very brief overviews here. So you can check it out if you're interested. Again, it's going to be light. It's going to be a little bit... Um, just it is what it is so i mean i can see why it's funded people like this sort of thing as a puzzle sudoku-esque style and it's doing something a little bit different with card play so gearworks check it out now i like talking about this one because i had this designer and i backed one of their previous games meridians as an abstract sort of light style game although it's actually a little bit heavier as an abstract as a whole uh the game itself is very light that's kind of what i said it's a very small box uh japanese designer here aquapipe though basically what you're doing is you're trying to play tic-tac-toe four, but maybe three in a row, depending on which version you want. And you have these different uh, diameter pipes made out of aluminum. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get four of the same in a row, horizontally, diagonally, or vertically. And you can place them within each other, or around each other, and you're just making the pipelines in the city as a whole. So how you're actually playing and doing it though, because you're just gonna be playing them down here, if we scroll down, to different spaces based on the diameters and what can go within another. So. That's it. If you want to get the expanded rule play, they give you a little bit of a video of how to do it. I wish there was a little bit more rules explanation on the page, but it's relatively straightforward. There's the three by three version if you want that and prefer that as a whole. And I believe they do the print and play just like they did with Meridian. So if you want a physical version, you can do that. They're not sure how available it's going to be after the campaign just because of the aluminum components that are going to be used in the first place to make this, especially with the artistic pipe colors. So if you're interested, again, Japanese designer, not going to get it anywhere else, not going to get it for a cheaper price, and probably not going to find it whatsoever. So if you're interested, again, uh, Yamamoto here as the designer, uh, you know, again, no have problems, got their last game. So good track record. If you're interested in this style of like abstract uh, strategic game, give it a look-see. I'm covering it because it's funded. You Shady Pooch, the game where posh pooches behave badly. Um, you call each other out and you have to one up them. And if you don't lay the card down quick enough, then someone else can dog pile on, it says, as the lead card uh, response there. So with a higher number, higher number, or well, if you play a queen, it has a special action depending on how you want to do it. And then if you really want to pick up the pile, you yell, you shady pooch at whoever named you and you have to start a new pile. So you shed all your cards and then the round ends and again, Whoever has the most diamonds gets points. If you have the most bones, you win. That's it. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. If you want to get a deluxe set, ooh, look at that. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> Leave that alone. But again, it's funded. It's got $1,000. It's $1,000 more than I've ever raised on crowdfunding with 22 people. 22 people? That's crazies. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Next game. So next up, almost funded. Trade in Triumph, $4,500 to $5,000. 
uh, you've got three different action deck piles that you're going to be pulling from eight different regions and four different paths that you're going to be trying to go across. And these trade routes, you're just going to basically put your marker on them. And on a turn by turn basis, you just move it one step across and you draw from one of these three decks trying to do a sort of hand management style game. So as you're going along, though, with the rule book pulled up here, you're going to be utilizing these trade cards, these influence cards and these specialty cards, depending on how you're earning your gold. And you're going to be arriving in certain different places, including trade nodes and cities that are going to allow you to not only play or do utilize these cards in order to get them uh you know the resources and the actions available to you but also to then uh place your trade cards down because your trade cards then get revealed in terms of how much gold you're going to be earning when you reach the end of the trade route when somebody gets to 20 points that's the end of the game uh as your turns go along i mean again you're playing your cards or performing an upgrade or doing you know potentially nothing depending on what's left in your hand as you're maneuvering so again very straightforward uh 69 minutes i'd say it seems like just on the rule book alone it'd be less than that and if you want to check it out again it's going to be 35 dollars with the base game 39 is going to get you a little bit extra here content and if you really want to deluxify it with a little bling down here with mini expansions and exclusive little tiny miniatures you can again well get it for the same price as the kickstarter edition if you're early enough so paragon games first game created almost funded and Give it a look-see. The last one's over here on GameFound. Under the Sun from Tabletop Games just launched. 150% of funding goal right now. $77,000 raised in this sort of post-apocalyptic uh, sort of desert setting, Mad Max style, if you will, with sort of a movement-based, hex resource-based day, middle of the day, night phase sort of system that they got set up. But the, the flow is going to be a little bit difficult because the page doesn't really give you a whole lot of what that's going to look like. You have your slightly different characters that you're going to be choosing from moving over the hex based grid system with skills, attributes and dice rolling that you're going to be doing and divining from these different decks as you go throughout not only uh, the event decks, the weather decks, as well as the enemy decks but then also the additional cards and actions you're going to be playing through each one of these. And so when we pull this up, you can finally see down here at the bottom of the rule book what this actually looks like here. You have the preparation phase where you're doing all the cleanup, the day tracking, the enemy movement, then the morning, the afternoon, and the night. So you're getting the sun weather, you're raising your AP, you're drinking, or you take damage, then you play your actions. Drinking, take damage, play actions. Then again, infection, damage, all players get your AP back up, and then during your turn, you drink water and get a night card and play actions. So uh, obviously there's gonna be some different event or stylings uh, that are gonna be based off of these different phases of the you know day, but that's the basic gist of the game. And they give you a whole bunch of stuff of just literally explaining turn by turn by turn by turn here. So you're gonna have to mix and match those together. This is more like a listing of rules in a rule book rather than necessarily giving you the best sense of, of flow as you're going. It throws you the skill tests that you can see as here uh, with the different uh, dice that are gonna have different amount of sides on them. And then this is the amount of actions that you can do, right? Move, charge, sneak, explore, recon, collect, replenish, craft, use, trade, swap, loot, eat, collect, rain, sleep, open container, discard. So it's, it's a lot to remember. There's a lot going on there. Uh, for this system and there's merchants you're gonna be buying from resource allocations dealing with night and that's kind of the gist of the game if you want to buy the expansions too they're going to give you two more additional characters which uh, you can start off with four in the base game that you're choosing from in a one to four player game and if you want to do solo you take two characters on it also has the semi-cooperative aspect where you're drawing team alliance cards either for just like the regular survivors versus uh the sons of liberty or something like that i believe it's called where actually it's not as bad you just a little have a little paranoia all the shadows of camelot but you do four plus the number of players cards so there's going to be a plethora of cards so you don't actually know if that semi-cooperative is there but if you're going to play semi-cooperative i'd rather just either play fully semi-cooperative and you know it and guess who it is or just not have it at all i mean that's my dead of winter philosophy at least artwork's fantastic again hex based grid system moving a few videos here but that's about it so uh, you may have to check out the videos. You may have to read the rule book uh, just to get a sense of what the actions are you're going to be doing. But uh, you know what? People seem to like what they see so far. So $77,000 it is. Next up, Quest Over Coffee. And then Gabe Barrett, I was looking at this and I was going, haven't I seen like three campaigns ready from him this year? And the answer is yes. Robomon was his one uh, that is still pending. And if you go over to the page here, they've got, what, four, five games actually now, including this one 
uh, still yet to be delivered. And this one's not anywhere close, the design one. This one and this one are working on it, and we covered these two previously this year, and this one's still pending too. And so that's just a lot of overhead, and so I hope he's not biting off more than he can chew, because it appears that with these last couple, they're doing solo games of the month. And this is Quest Over Coffee, which basically you do a quest, you shop, you do a quest, and you score up your in-game victory points, and people like solo games, and it's got $17,000. You're using dice to mitigate actions, items, and equipment that you can utilize along your way to defeat an end boss, and you're kind of going through a potential campaign scenario if you want to as well with the adventure mode. That's it. You have a setting of five quests up there that you can choose from. You're rolling your dice and you're mitigating and scoring. So that's what it says, right? You do it in the time it takes you to drink a cup of coffee, a couple of videos if you want. And they're going to say, here you go. Here's the solo game of the month, a little bit of things. And 99% finished at campaign launch. So that's why he's having them all simultaneously, I guess. There you go. GameFound giving us more and they're doing well. Last up here, Baseball Highlights 2045, Bases Loaded Edition and the new All-Star Expansion. Eagle Griffin Games is giving us a new edition with this one. It's just the thematic incorporation of baseball with a card-driven aspect as you slowly bat your way around by playing cards and utilizing them both on an offensive and defensive side with a little bit of asymmetry, with a little bit of a power-up because, you know, it is the 21st century and just kind of a light little mini game that you alternate sides by playing six cards for a full game's length. The latest edition here, they say, is going to be a 15-card ex all-star expansion, as well as issuing all previous expansions and promo cards with a big box if you missed anything along the way. The game itself is rather straightforward, it's rather clever, and it's rather simple at the same time. You take your six cards, and then you're going to resolving any immediate actions on your played card that you're playing, resolving any threatened hits from their last card, and placing your batters to represent the threatened hits from your played card, and you have different speeds at which and different threats based on the cards that you're laying down, either a white or blue or a red, depending on how good or how fast they are. The speed of the batter doesn't affect the initial base they're placed on, but it depends on what it's going to move elsewise after the next card gets played. As it says at the top here, you only play those six cards at hand unless... You get a pinch hitting visitor save or it goes to extra innings. They give you the exceptions there and the extra innings again gives you a little bit of summary there. How you go then in buying and enhancing your team on a round by round basis in between these little mini games. And it gives you a few very detailed rundown examples, including the different game modes that are going to be available to you, including tournament setups. So then what is the all-star expansion offering you? Well, Golden Glove cancels three hits, Magna Glove Plus, Leaping Catch. So canceling, canceling, mitigating, mitigating, and getting all of it for relatively actually good price because i remember this was out of print and that was not anywhere close to the price i think like maybe like 75 or 90 dollars even it seemed like so 48 dollars plus another six to get all of that and i guess that's actually a pretty freaking good deal i'd say based on what i remember from a year or two ago if you want to name your promo cards well you're too late because they're all sold out so take that for what you will and that's pretty much everything there's plenty of other videos because this game's been out for a while and you have a good sense of it but i think it's relatively well received widely one of the better sports related games out there in the first place no wonder they're funded at this point and that is baseball highlights so that's it that's the roundup today some I mean, it's not like massive, massive hitters, right? Like a couple of these might be close to a million by the end with Roth and Inventors. So we'll see where they end up. But, you know, that's interesting. I like seeing the dichotomy. A few heavier games this week, though, as well. Not as bad on the lack of rulebook side of things as last week, though. And not nearly as long as last week's because I didn't have to cover 32 freaking games because I missed a week. And I, you know, your boy wanted to cover as many as I can because, you know, I cover the big ones. And also at the end there, I'm even covering the small ones because... We still need to talk about them. They might not be your flavor. They might be your ilk, but they deserve a little bit of attention too. So uh, that's it. Another news upcoming video uh, tomorrow because somehow even in a week span, there's tons of news, tons of things announced, tons of things sort of shaking out and kind of, um, well, need to be talked about, including, did you know, spoilers, Simon's next game is actually launching next week. I know, all right? I said, holy crap, holy crap. Like, didn't we just have one that ended? And... I'll have some thoughts on that. I'll have some thoughts on that. And there's a couple other bigger ones named uh, launching next week, including uh, the other one that I have my eye on that I may actually be getting a prototype copy now of Reign of Hades. But I am going to be getting a copy as well of Dying Light. So I'm not sure I'm going to have a video up before the campaign ends, but uh, they'll probably be able to late pledge so I can give you some more information on it. But you know what? That's all I got. Have a great freaking day. Stay classy. Back something or not. Don't back stuff. I'm going to go, uh, you know, probably film uh, after this my Star Wars Unlimited unboxing. So if you want to see that next week and how badly I pull, because 
you know what? I figured it out, right? The reason I'm hesitating on opening this stuff, just like when I hoard resources in like digital games and video games and stuff, is because as long as they're sitting there as a hoard, as long as I'm sitting there and I have 400 tokens, right? Those tokens aren't bad. Those tokens aren't disappointing yet <laughs> because they're, the potential is still there. And that's sort of like the Star Wars Unlimited uh, deck box uh, sitting on my counter right now. The potential is it could be anything. I could get a showcase card. By the way, those showcase cards, like they're like the full art versions of, of like the hero leader cards. They're selling for like anywhere between like two hundred and four or five hundred dollars, depending on the character card. So if I pull one of those, that basically pays off my full investment as a whole. And God forbid I actually get a good one like Boba Fett or Thrawn or Emperor Palpatine, which people are like salivating over. I won't get any of those. I won't, probably won't even get a Vader. I probably won't even get a Luke. I probably won't get anything good. But I'm gonna try and play competitively. One of my friends locally, you know who you are. Uh, we're gonna maybe do some. In the near future i really want to go to one of the events locally but like the last event was starting at like a seven o'clock on a, a saturday night last weekend before the time change right and I, I asked someone who had went previously and they're like how long is it going and they said about four hours so i'm like okay you know it's gonna take me 25 minutes to get there and i'm gonna have to leave at 6 30. if it goes on time at four hours then I'm gonna get out of there at 11, which with the time change is gonna be 12, which means by the time I'm home again home, it's gonna be 12.30 and then, you know, um, early morning on Sunday. No, no, can't do it. <laughs> I was really, I really disappointed though because it was, a, it was a draft one. So you pay like your 30 bucks and they give you like the pre-release kit and you just build your deck out of the cards. I've, I've just wanted to do that. I just wanted to try that. So I'm really sad I don't get to do that because a lot of the other events locally are at like strange times too that I'm not gonna be able to do weeknights, right? Like I can't do weeknights. My kids have stuff and either I'm home watching the kids or I'm there with the kids. Oh, and you know, again, it's like three hours, four hours, or it's, you know, pay $6 to bring your own constructed deck and play for the same amount of time. And we'll give you one pack as a, you know, consolation of no matter what place or no matter how well you do or not. So I don't know. I'm afraid it's going to be like Star Wars Destiny, but I'm in. So we're going to see. I'm going to show you how badly I pull, and you can live uh, the regret through me so you don't have to deal with the TCG disappointment like I do. Speaking of disappointments, though, there will be a video out next week. If you like the unboxing and rambling from this past week, you will like the one that's coming up next week even more. Even more. Spoilers. Even more. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. Go back me on Patreon, subscribe if you made it this far, hit the thumb button. I'll throw the Board Game Geek uh, blog link down below. Help me get on the hotness of the page, of the front page, you know? Uh, I, I get like, like, like 10 thumbs, and I've got 140 subscribers on the Board Game Geek page. And so if half of you, if half of you that watched this video went over there and thumbed this, that would be like, I've never made the front page. I never make the front page. I'm never gonna have a video on the front page. I'm gonna try though, I'm gonna keep trying. So. You know what? If you want to back me on Patreon, you're helping me afford Star Wars Unlimited this month so I can show you disappointment and you don't have to spend it for yourself, right? Like, instead of you buying all of that, just you pay me a small sum and you can live vicariously through me. I'm done. I'm ranting. I'm rambling. It's over. I need to go play some of the Bitewing games uh, for their upcoming crowdfunding campaign, Bebop and Cat Blues. If you missed the unboxing from this past week, you can check out what they are as well from that one. I'm done prompting, shooting myself in the foot here. Have a great day. Peace out. Thanks, guys. Hey, it's Chris. What are we doing today? Five? So they say it's a combination of... The second one is the Celestials. The second one is the Celestials. I'm screwing up a bunch of words already here at the beginning.